Number 50, suppose you measure the terminal voltage of a 1.585 volt alkaline cell having an internal resistance of 0.1 ohms by placing a one kilo ohm voltmeter across its terminals. What current flows? All right, so here's the circuit on the top. So what we probably should do first is apply loop rule to this. So remember the long bar represents the positive terminal, the short bar represents the negative. And let's just assume the current's flowing in a clockwise fashion, okay? So we'll start at this particular point, call this point A, and this is point B, so what we'll do is we'll go A, B, and then back to A, all right? Abba. So um, we know that the sum, right, of all the potential rises minus the sum of all the potential drops or falls will equal zero. Okay, that's loop rule. So as we travel around the circuit here, we hit a voltmeter. They tell us inside of that voltmeter there is a resistance right, of one kilo ohm, one times 10 to the three ohms, in other words, right? So, um, and the current, by the way, flowing through the circuit is going to be just simply I1, or just I, it doesn't really matter what you call it. But the current here, there is no parallel arrangement, it's just gonna be I, all right? It doesn't break up at all, so it's just I. So uh, when the current I passes through this resistance, it would have a voltage drop, remember we would be using Ohm's law, V is equal to IR, in other words, the voltage uh, drop that occurs through this voltmeter here would be uh, V1 is equal to I1 R1. In other words, the current flowing through that voltmeter multiplied by the resistance of that voltmeter. So we know then that it's going to be a fall because it's traveling through uh, the resistance, right? And we're moving with the direction of the stated current. And uh, so this is just going to simply be then um, 1 times 10 to the 3 time, that's the ohm value, right? That's R times then I, all right? And then that is going to be okay. And then we're gonna keep traveling around. And here we're gonna to get to this resistance. This represents the internal resistance, all right? So this little thing here is going to be 0.1 ohm, all right? So that's another potential uh, fall though. So we're gonna take that and add to it now, the uh, 0.1 times little r, oh, excuse me, times I, because this is little r. And then, and by the way, if you need a little refresher, check out uh, you know some of the problems earlier in this chapter, went through a detailed analysis of how to think through uh, circuit and loop rule, all right? And that's gonna be equal to zero, and then we keep traveling back, we still gotta get to point A, and we pass through the battery, we went from a negative to a positive, so we're happy, right? We're increasing our potential, so that's gonna be the voltage rise now. And that voltage was given of 1.585, 1.585. So now, if you take a step back and realize what we have, we have 1.585 minus then one times 10 to the three I plus 0.1 I is equal to zero. One equation with one unknown, this is now solvable, right? So we let's add these two together. I mean, we're basically going to get one times 10 to the three. I'm gonna use the exact values though when I do this, all right? That'll be I, and then that'll be equal to now, right? If I add those two together, it would, oops, whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, a little mistake right there. That should have been a negative sign because I have to distribute that to each term. And this would have been a negative value, then this would have been 1.585. That's still equal to zero. Just add this term on over to the right-hand side. So then we would get 1.585 is equal to one times 10 to the three times I. Divide both sides by one times 10 to the three. I'm gonna divide it by that exact value of basically one 1,000.1, okay? So let's see, 1.585 divided by 1,000.1, okay? And that worked out to be 5 point, uh, excuse me, 1.5, 1 1.58, I guess, times 10 to the minus three, right? Amps, okay? So that's the current that's flowing, all right? That takes care of that. Now it says to find that terminal voltage, all right? So we're gonna get rid of all this stuff. Now we gotta find the terminal voltage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the terminal voltage formula, right? Terminal voltage formula. And that basically says this, that the terminal voltage is equal to the EMF of the battery minus then the current that flows multiplied by its internal resistance. So the EMF was 1.585 minus the internal resistance was 0 0.1 uh, and times the current, actually I should have had the current first because that's I, 
times the current, which we just found was 1.58 times 10 to the minus 3. And then, uh, you know, multiply by that internal resistance of 0 0.1. So, I mean, obviously, I think you see what's going to happen here. Uh, 1.585 minus now 1.58. I'll use that exact value from before. So 1.585 minus then that exact answer multiplied by 0.1. So, I mean, 1.58 considering the rounding, right, we would round this to five, all right, in terms of, I guess, sig figs or whatever. So this is going to be in terms of volts. And then, you know, letter C, they're asking us then, that's the terminal voltage, by the way, for letter B, and then letter C, it says, how close to the measured terminal voltage is this? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the exact value of this number that I just calculated, all right, which was 1.584841511, oops you know, blah, 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 <laughs> then divide it by the 1.585, all right, to find the ratio. So divide that now by 1.585, and it's 0 0.9999, right? That's how close, 0 0.9999. So basically, the terminal voltage is basically identical to, for all intents and purposes, the total battery's EMF. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that helped. Please remember to help us out if you can. Subscribe button, like button, and we'll see you soon. Take care.